With the recent appointment of Frank Lampard as Everton's new gaffer, I felt like it was only right to rebuild Everton next. If we're going to be totally honest with each other right now, Everton are in the bin at the minute. They are just above the relegation zone, the 16th in the Premier League. Now, Everton's squad has the potential to reach the top six, in my opinion. Maybe not top six, but definitely a top 10 finish. But they are hitting nowhere near where they could potentially be. Frank Lampard's new gaffer, he's brought along Ashley Cole, and now he's got me to help rebuild Everton from the ground up to make them European champions by the end of this video. Also, guys, if you haven't already, smash that subscribe button, hit that like button. If you do go on to enjoy this video, it really does help with the channel. Up the toughest. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have yet to see one of my rebuild videos before, here are the rules. The main objective of this rebuild is to win the Champions League. I can make any transfers that I want, making it as realistic as possible. All games have to be simulated, but the Champions League final has to be played. Now that you know how this works, strap yourselves in and enjoy the video. Before we do anything in this rebuild, there's one thing I have to do. Now that that's out of the way, we can focus on rebuilding the team. We've got just over £45 million to spend. And if I'm being honest, Everton's starting lineup is actually not too bad. I mean, they've got some very, very good players in this team. They've got Richarlison and DC out up top anyway. And we have also added Donny van der Beek and Deli Alley to the team as well. We begin this transfer window by bringing in a right back by the name of Benjamin Pavard. The Frenchman is 25 years old, 79 rated, and he cost us just under £30 million to get away from Bayern Munich. This has to be the lowest rated youth academy player I have ever seen. 16-year-old William Chadwick is 23 overall. His potential is between 77 and 94, but I just don't believe that for a second. I know that a lot of people are going to be annoyed with this transfer, but for me, it's necessary. We have sold fan favourite Seamus Coleman to Napoli for just under £10 million. And we've also sold Allen to Milan for just under £29 million. Also just sold Fabian Dal to Montpellier for just under £3.5 million. Meanwhile, we have brought in the Ukrainian Victor... I am again trying to pronounce that last name because I will completely butcher it. We have brought him over from Inter Milan for the region of just under £40 million. He's 23 years old, 80 rated, 5 foot 10. I want this guy to stay long term. I feel like if we can keep him long term, he'll come really good for the club. We have also just sold Solomon Rondon to Borussia Mönchengladbach for just under £5 million, And we've also sent out Tom Davies on a one-year loan to Strasbourg. On top of that, we have just sold Gmabin to Lille for the region of just over £7 million. We have come to the end of the transfer window and this is how the team is currently looking. Just to give you guys a bit of an update, um, I'll be honest with you, the people that I'm putting the most faith into this year are Dali Alli and Van Der Beek. It's quite ironic because Dali Alli has come from Tottenham Hotspur where he started off incredibly when he first started gaining some limelight, but he's really started to decrease. Hopefully ever since his second chance in real life as well. And Donny Van Der Beek. Do you know what? I hope that when United play against Everton, Van Der Beek tears them apart because this man is so underrated. It's going to be interesting to see where we are at the halfway point this season. So, we are sitting in the top eight at the halfway point. So, to be fair, I'm not too unhappy with that. I mean, I would I would prefer a top six. I'm not going to lie to you. I feel like we're a bit better than Leeds United at this point. But the top four are pretty solid. You've got Liverpool, Chelsea, Man City, United. Arsenal are 11th. Don't you just love to see it. When I say I've just received the most insulting transfer offer in the history of transfer offers, I am not joking. John Joe Kenny, right? 75 rated, 24 years old. Yeah, fair enough. Palace have offered me just over 750,000 for him. Patrick Vieira, you can shove that transfer offer where the sun doesn't shine. We have done a little bit of business in this transfer winner. We've sold Alex Awebi to Leipzig for just under £20 million, which, in my opinion, is a great bit of business. And we've also sold Andros Townsend to Borussia Mönchengladbach for just under £12 million. And on deadline day, we have successfully got Everton away from Benfica for just under £38 million. 25 years old, 81 rated. I believe this guy is quite a good talent in real life as well. So I'm actually quite happy to get this guy And after that transfer window This is how the team is looking Just to give you guys a bit of an update Calvert-Lewin and Richarlison are running the show up top The rest of the team, if I'm being quite honest Is looking exceptionally well-rounded So realistically speaking We should be looking at a top six finish We really fell off in that second half of the season We were 12 points behind Leicester City With sixth place This That is just shocking I thought with the team we've got We'd have actually pushed for top six But it looks like we're just outside I 
don't know whether that means that we entered that the rip-off Europa League. I'm not too sure, but I know for a fact we're not in the Europa or the Champions League. Liverpool won the FA Cup. We ended up losing against Chelsea in the Carabao Cup final on penalties. Basel ended up winning the Europa Conference League. PSG won the Europa League. And Bayern Munich ended up beating Manchester City to win the Champions League. As expected, Richarlison and DCL ran the show, getting themselves just under 40 goals between them as the partnership. I won't lie to you, though. I'm disappointed that we didn't make it into the top six. I thought for sure that we had the strength in the team to do it but that's where season two comes in and we are going to have to make some big signings to make a big impact on the premier league so this season we've got just under 100 million pounds and we all kick starting season two off with a bang and signing nicholas Schuler, the german giant 26 years old 84 rating he costs us just under 56 million pounds. On the flip side, we've just sold Michael Keane to Hoffenheim for just over 28 million pounds. We have just signed Mark Cucurella from Brighton for just over 57 million pounds. 23 years old, 83 rated. This man's going to be special. In other news, Mason Holgate had a release clause I had no idea about. So Holgate is now playing for Chelsea and we got just under 22 million for him. I hate release clauses so much. So that transfer window has just finished. This is a little update on how the team is looking. As you can see by the overalls, this team substantially improved from last season. Now, I do believe that we are in the Conference Europa League or whatever it's called. So let's go to that group table and see who we're up against. We're up against Besiktas FC 20 and Svet FC. I'll be honest with you. If we don't make it out of Group A, I'm going to be so goddamn disappointed. I'll actually deactivate my YouTube channel if we don't make it out of Group A. So we are going to sim to the halfway point in three two one as expected we absolutely crushed group a we didn't even lose a single game we conceded five as well in six games that shows how dominant we are so uh, i believe that takes us straight to the next round i think that we skipped the prelims yep we skipped the prelims so let's go to the premier league okay in the premier league we are absolutely killing it we've lost one game all season and we are top of the league Holy shit, that I did not see coming in the slightest. Boys, season two is looking to be one of the best seasons we have had in Rebuild history. Anyone who knows me knows how much of a fan I am of Connor Gallagher. And I am so happy we've just managed to nab him away from Chelsea. 37 million this man cost us. Dali Ali for me isn't cutting it at the minute. Conor Gallagher is 22 and already 81 rated, so I want to slot him into that central midfielder position to see what he can do for a season or two. And that's the end of that transfer window, and this is how the team is looking, just to give you guys a little bit of an update. Conor Gallagher is slotted straight into that central midfielder role. Deli Ali will be taking a backseat from now on. For those of you wondering, I have put Cucurella on a position change developmental plan, but for some reason, it just hasn't worked. He's still a wing back for some reason, or whatever, I don't really care. He's still going up like a rocket, so he was an insanely good purchase. The only thing we could really do with is another centre back and maybe if Everton doesn't start booking his ideas up, another left midfielder and this team next season will be a contender for the Champions League. But that depends if we even finish in the Champions League spot. We've only gone and won the league in season two. That is probably a record for this rebuild series. We've never won the league that quickly before in our rebuild. We beat Manchester United to the top spot by one point that's all that was in it one point liverpool were third chelsea fourth spurs were sixth where arsenal arsenal are not it's always arsenal who were the ones that are slacking into it out of london we lost in the final to tottenham hotspur 3-2 in the fa cup liverpool beat arsenal to win the carabao cup wolfsburg ended up winning the europa conference league that's quite interesting i wonder where we came where did we oh okay wolfsburg knocked us out of it in the semi-finals i'll take a semi-final villarreal won the europa league after beating Roma 2-0 in the final and by Munich make it two Champions Leagues in a row by beating Manchester City in the final. Good grief look at the stats on our top three players. So we got DC Al with over 30 goals to his name we've got our big man Victor, I'm going to try and pronounce his name Victor Shankoff I want to say Shankoff who got 23 goals and 11 assists from the right midfielder position. 
in Richarlison who bagged himself over 20 goals this season. That's insane stats, that is. I'm just hoping we can replicate this next season. Who knows? We could get a Champions League final in season three. It is certainly going to be interesting to see how we do, though, next season because if we can make the correct signings, I mean, we're going to have a bit more budget to play with, I think, in season three because of how we've done this season. So I think next season we go big. Season 3 is the season for massive signings because we've got over £180 million to play with. I'm very aware that I said that I wanted Conor Gallagher to take Dali Alley's role, but that was before we got given over £180 million to play with. So I have brought in my man, Tushameni. I'm pretty sure I butchered that name, but whatever. We moved 6 foot 2, 23 years old, 86 rated, £100 million to get. He's getting straight in that starting lineup and he is not moving an inch. Joe Gomez has become the latest name in the long line of traitors. He's gone from being a red to a blue, 6 foot 2, 26 years old, 85 rated, just under £50 million. I think it was time to let Deli Alli go to progress his career elsewhere. We've let him go to the Spanish Giants Atletico Madrid for £28 million pound we have brought in another player in nick pope 31 years old 82 rated he cost us 18.9 million pound to get away from burnley he's more for rotation if pickford gets injured in the champions league and that does wrap up that transfer window this is a little update on how the team is looking and i'm not gonna lie I, I think we've got a good shot. I really want to, like, replace Everton. Nobody will come in for him. And I can't afford to bring in anyone better. But other than that, I'm very happy with how the team is looking. It's not just that. Look at the subs bench as well. We've got such a good line of replacements as well for the players on the pitch. I don't think we've ever had such a well-rounded starting eleven and subs bench at one point. Now, we are in the Champions League, so let's go check out who's in our group. We are facing off against Napoli, Villarreal and Spartak Moscow. Now, I'm not too sure how this is going to play out. It could be any one of ourselves, Napoli and Villarreal going through. Spartak, I can't really see that happening. But realistically, Napoli are a good side and so are Villarreal. Villarreal are a fucking dark horse in this group. So what we're going to do, we're going to simulate to halfway points and hopefully we have the strength in our team to make it to the round of 16. We do make it through Group E. Napoli do top the table by two points. Ourselves are very closely behind them. Villarreal are nowhere to be seen pretty much along with Spartak Moscow. Now, I'm very happy with that. I'm not going to lie to you. But I'm quite nervous to see who we've got in the next round. Okay, we've got Inter Milan. That is probably the nicest round of 16 tie I have had in 2022. I will take Inter Milan in the round of 16. However, in the Premier League, we are doing nowhere near as well as we were doing last season. I think most of our performances have come... In the Champions League, we are literally 12 points from top of the table. Arsenal, how the hell are Arsenal top of the table? Brentford are having an insane season, 7th place. Meanwhile, we have finally managed to sell the man Everton to Borussia Dortmund for £28 million. I can already hear Arsenal fans crying about this one, and I'm loving every second. Emile smith Row, 23 years old, the Englishman is 83 rated, and he cost us £54 million to get away from the Gunners. And that is the end of that transfer window. Here is an update on how the team is looking. I've got a good feeling Emil smith throw will go up quite a bit by the end of the season, maybe to an 85 or 86 if we're lucky. But if you take a look at the rest of the team, this is potentially a Champions League winning team. I mean, we're up against Inter Milan first. That is not an easy fixture by any means of it. But it is definitely one of the better teams to pull in the round of 16. Plus, I've got all the faith in the boys. I mean, Van der Beek has paid that faith back so goddamn much. I think he's 26 and he's 86 rated. Man, I'm buzzing with how he's done for us. But we have a Champions League game to play, so let's go to that fixture. I was not expecting Inter Milan to have this good of a team. They've got Firmino and Martinez up top. That is a sexy partnership. You got Barella, Henderson, Fabinho. They basically raided Liverpool, haven't they? Let's be honest. Firmino, Henderson, Fabinho. Jesus Christ, they've, they've proper raided Liverpool. I don't know whether that's Thorgan or Heaton. Either way, that's a dangerous sign. I'll say this. I'm kind of regretting saying I'm glad I pulled against Inter Milan now because that team is... It, it's trouble. It's trouble. This is not going to be an easy game. But we are at home. We're at Goodison Park. 
Let's see what we can do. Can we do anything against him tomorrow? It's one all. Okay. It, it, that's one all. That's not too bad. And it's not too bad. It's neither here nor there. It just means we have to put a better performance in in the second leg. And hopefully we can knock out the Italian Giants. Definitely going to be a tricky one this. One all at the San Siro. Definitely not the easiest of places to get a win from. But stranger things have happened. We are Everton. We are away from home. Let's see if we can knock out the Italian chance and pick our place in the... F oh, yes, we've done it. We've beaten him. We've got our place in the quarterfinals. 3-2 on aggregate. Oh, my days. Season 3 for Everton is going to be one to remember. From one Italian giant to another. We are up against Juventus and that team. I'll be... Mm, it's all over the place, isn't it? Let's be honest. You've got Rafa on the left. Arthur on the right, Locatelli and Rabio. Locatelli is a pretty damn good player. He had to run. I believe he's transferred from either PSV or Ajax. Jesus, he's definitely trouble. You got Delict, Rudiger, Szczesny. I think our team is definitely better. It's more overall well rounded, but that means absolutely fuck all. We need to go into this game. High hopes, and hopefully. Oh no, we lose. They beat us 2-1 at their place. It's definitely not the easiest places to go to Juve's home ground. Okay, this is definitely going to be a massive mountain to climb in the second leg. I've loaded into this screen with the absolute horror that Calvert-Lewin is no longer a part of the team because he's out on a suspension, which just does not fill me with any confidence going into... We're, we're so out. Like, we are so going out in this game. Juve's team, McKenny and Ben Yedder, by the looks of it, have come on instead of whoever was playing in their spot. We're 2-1 down. We've got Calvert-Lewin out, and we're up against the Italian giant Juventus. Yeah, this just ain't going to happen, is it? Can we beat them? Believe oh, my God, we've done it. Emil Smith-Rowe with the brace in extra time gets... Oh, oh boys, I'm buzzing. We've beaten, we've beaten two Italian giants on the way to the semi-finals. Oh, come on. I'm buzzing with this. Let's go the toffees. At some point or another, we always end up playing against PSG in the Champions League. They've got the front three of absolute nightmares. That middle three as well is not exactly bad. Yeah, that, that team, that starting 11, is pretty goddamn scummy if you ask me. And we've got one of our best midfielders out. Can we go one game without one of our players being out on suspension? But it is what it is. Nevertheless... We're against PSG, we're at Goodison Park. Can we get an advantage going into the second leg? Okay, we lose 2-1. We lose 2-1. It's I'll be honest with you, it's not exactly the worst result in the world. It's against PSG after all. We can only hope that we perform better at PSG's ground and somehow overturn this and get our place in the finals. We've finally got our team back to full strength and we are certainly going to need it against PSG in this second leg. We're 2-1 down. We are at PSG's home ground, which just does not make this any easier. They've got Sakari. It's like, you scumbags. He's a CD. I'm not a, well, I suppose you can play. You scumbags, PSG. Nevertheless, we're going to quick sim this game and hopefully we can pull off the impossible and Oh my god, we've fucking done it. We've actually gone and done it. Van der Beek and Emile Smith Rowe have booked our place in the Champions League final in season three with Everton. We have just beaten PSG. We've beaten Inter Milan, Juve, and now PSG. Oh my god, I'm, I'm buzzing. We've just beaten possibly the biggest threat to us winning the Champions League. Okay, so we've got the Spanish giant Real Madrid. In the Champions League final. It's, it's kind of nice playing different teams every rebuild. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm actually quite enjoying this. It's a different challenge each time. But we do play, I'm guessing, the likes of Vinicius Jr. Maybe Benzema if he's still there. Asensio. We've got Rodrigo to contend with. There's a lot of big players in Real Madrid's team that we've got to watch out for. But before we get into the Madrid game, let's go have a look at how we've done elsewhere this season. So we really recovered in the second half of this season. We finished second just behind our our biggest rivals Liverpool it was only three points that separated us between winning the league and not oh well no not three points I suppose 
goal difference you have to take into account as well. But Arsenal really dropped the ball. Man City, United, Chelsea, Spurs. <laughs> Spurs always lacking as well. Quite a successful season, if you ask me. Second in the league. Yep, I'll, I'll definitely take second in the league. Tottenham Hotspur won the Carabao Cup, beating Liverpool of all teams. Agamo Calcio beat Lille to win the Europa Conference League. And Tottenham Hotspur beat Roma to win the Europa League. Just having a quick scan through the stats. I mean, the boys have done absolutely brilliant, haven't they? Emil Smith-Rowe really made a name for himself this season. I told you go up by at least two overall. Maybe three if we were lucky, but two. I definitely called that one. Van der Beek, they've all done brilliant, aren't they? Let's be honest. Let's go have a look at Real Madrid's team. Okay, Real Madrid's team is definitely something to be feared. So that front three alone is quite terrifying. You've got Milinkovic, Savic, Tielemans and Casemiro. Casemiro must be getting on at this point. I don't. I think that might be Theo Hernandez. If I was Real Madrid, I'd have gone for Theo. Laporte, Bastoni, Carvel, Courtois. It's definitely a very, very good team, but... We've got a very good team as well. So it is Everton versus Real Madrid in the Champions League final. Everton versus Real Madrid. Donny van der Beek. He gets a bit of free space. Ooh, Courtois with the good save. Modric is hanging up his boots, eh? That's, that's what an illustrious career that guy's had. Right, Richarlison. Richarlison. He's finding Emile Smith Rowe. He's going to bring this inside. Smith Rowe on his right foot. Ah, it gets blocked. It goes for a corner. Oh, no. Ah, oh, thank God for that. Whoever took that shot should be ashamed of themselves. We aren't playing well at all at the minute, guys. Pavard makes a great tackle there by tackling Vinicius. And we are on the attack. Can we find Richarlison? Richarlison is away. Richarlison is away. Calvert-Lewin is nowhere to be seen. And we make it 1-0 from a superb pass from Emile Smithrow, I do believe it was, feeding Richarlison in. The pass cuts straight in between defensive lines. Richarlison outpaced Bastoni onto his right foot. Finesse shot, bottom right corner. He's never missing that in a million years. Courtois did not stand a chance. And Richarlison makes it 1-0 to Everton in the Champions League final. You know, I had someone asking me, like, why I've never in more than one final in a rebuild. It's very simple. It's because I've never lost a final. And because, quite frankly, I'm actually quite good at this game. I mean, it's not like I play on amateur. I play on ultimate. And I play it on four minutes where ultimate really do decide to kick your ass whenever they want. But, quite frankly, I've never lost. So, uh, I don't know the feeling. And that is half time. We are 1 0 going into the half time break. If you check the stats. We've got more shots. Yes, they got a little bit more possession. We've outpassed them, though. We've been tackling them quite well. They've had to make more saves than us. I mean, realistically, we are we're, we're definitely, definitely dominating the game, in my opinion. Let's not have a repeat of the Man City game, eh? I do not want to concede straight from kickoff. I do not want to concede straight from kickoff. Lovely speaking to existence. Emil Smith Rowe, can we feed in Richarlison once again? Oh my god. Emil Smith Rowe with these balls are oh, too goddamn good. It literally is the mirror of the first goal that we scored with Richarlison. Emil Smith Rowe with the through ball in behind the defenders. Richarlison leaving his man for dead on his right foot. Same corner, same shot, exact same goal pretty much. Look at that for a bloody pass from Emil Smith Rowe, man. And what a finish from Richarlison yet again. Courtois looking like he's a Sunday league keeper. Bang, get in. 2 0 in the Champions League final. It's all but finished. Big Benz is on the ball now. He's just passed it to Casemiro. Real Madrid is starting to turn the heat up a little bit now. They're passing it really nicely. We managed to get the block in, but now it's our turn. Now it is our turn. Can Calvert Lewin find that? Oh, not quite. Considering Real Madrid are losing 2 0, they aren't really that. In much of a hurry to attack us. The the real oh just as I say that, Vinicius Jr. decides to go on a mad one. Okay, let's just contain him. Oh, Pavard, that we need to be doing better than that, lad. We need to be doing far better than that. Uh oh, yeah. There it is. There it is. That was fucking shocking defending from me. Who scored that? Jovic. 
Yeah, okay, it's 2-1 now. Madrid have got a lifeline. We cannot afford to defend like that. That was absolute dog shit defending from me. I don't know what I was doing here. I should have seen that coming a mile off, to be honest. Oh, Richardson's got the ball here. Can we dink it over to Calvert-Lewin? calvert Oh, my imagine if that would have gone in. Imagine if that would have gone in. Oh, my God. It would have been the, it would have been the English Giroud. And that was definitely on target as well because Courtois had to make a save. Holy shit, what an attempt that was. Real Madrid have really turned on the gas in these last couple of minutes. Cucurella with a great tackle though. And is it our turn to finish this game off? Come on, can we finish this game off? Richarlison, can we find Calvert-Lewin? Calvert-Lewin, can we find the dink, that all-important dink? Richarlison with the first touch of... Oh, you got five star weak foot, man. What are you doing there? That should be your hat trick, lad. Extra time. We're one minute into extra time. Real Madrid. I've got the ball. They are in our half, which I do not like in the slightest. We just need to get this ball away. Oh, my God. We've done it. The Toffees are European champions. They are champions of Europe. You love to see it. A brace from Emile Smith throw of assists and a brace of goals from Richarlison. Clinch Everton. The Champions League away from Real Madrid. Leave a comment down below on who you want me to do on a rebuild next. If it is a team that has got a low budget or a lower league team that isn't that good, just give me a bit of time because these take a tremendous amount of time to do. If you have enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like. Smash that subscribe button if you are new around here. It massively helps the channel with its growth. It's been your boy Godin. Until next time, have a fantastic day and I'll see you guys in a bit. Yeah.